Okay, I'm out here uh, in Warwick County, northern Warwick County, in southern Indiana, my childhood home, visiting my mom, and I'm out here this morning to do a little painting, and it's an uh, overcast morning, a little bit of rain spitting here and there, let's just shoot for the sky right off the bat. And I'm using my uh, limited palette, titanium white, cad lemon yellow, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue. Brush it in a palette knife to mix up this much color. I'm getting nothing like what I want. <laughs> I haven't even ate breakfast yet. I just came on out here to paint. I think we got some rain it's supposed to show up in a little bit. shooting for the I know you can't see the scene that I'm painting kind of limited on my camera set up here got it sitting on top of the on the roof of my truck but uh, just going for the atmosphere of this uh, field there's a hill back there which I've it's been so long since I've been up here, but I think that's Turpin Hill that I'm looking at over there. Needs to be a little bluer. So when you got just the three primary colors, you're just either you know trying to you know turn it. You know, lean it towards blue, lean it towards yellow, lean it towards red. I do have some coffee, though. I may not have eaten yet. dark cedar tree right here in the foreground. Kind of a dark warm green. <coughs> Sorry that's not a corona cough. My allergies are working on me. <laughs> One thing about a day like today, the light stays, you know, pretty consistent because the clouds are socked in. That 
atmosphere if things in the distance are going to be bluer than the things in the foreground. saturated color and yellow, red, orange in the foreground. Shadows are going to be darker. Like today, the shadow, everything's merged because of the lighting condition. I'm trying not to you know, let myself get, you know, working on any kind of details or anything. Right now, it's just get it blocked in, so I have a sense of the design. There was a little bit of white snuck in right there. White just kills the saturation. I can already tell already that <clears throat> distant hill is way too dark. Really gonna have to kick it back. But you can't really tell that until you start putting things up front. And, uh, start making evaluations from there. This is a 12 by 16 canvas, by the way. My palette. That I'm using here. That's my plan air user. This is the day tripper and the upright panel holder for a prolific painter. It's a great setup if you're looking to get something just lightweight, quick to set up, has a nice big mixing area, has these wings that fold out for you to set your stuff on. This particular panel holder is the 24 inch with the 12 inch arms, so I could get a 24 inch tall canvas in here if I wanted. I'll tell you what, that alizarin crimson is strong. It doesn't take much for that stuff to overpower a mixture. Okay, now that I've got it pretty much covered. It's looking out there, I can tell you know, this distant hill is just way too, way too dark. So let's work on that real quick. down here at how this looks on the palette versus once I put it up there. This looks way lighter down here than once I put it up there. So the important thing is to mix. Don't don't you know worry about what it looks like here. You gotta worry about what it looks like up here. So Atmospheric painting like this, you gotta you wanna keep that line soft against the sky. It's 
guy's going to need to be lightened up too. There's little holes in the, in the tree. You don't want to necessarily use the exact color you mixed up there because you're looking through the tree. So the leaves and everything are kind of influencing what you're seeing through there. If you use that same mixture, it would really pop too much. As often knows I'm just like constantly wiping my brush off, so I'm not introducing <coughs> like a you know something back into the color. I mean, sometimes I want to, but not always. Some distance there is like another field back there behind this row of trees. So, try to get that. And it's going to be, you know, <clears throat> way you know more neutralized than these foreground. You know, this field is closer than that field, so you know, this is going to be more you know saturated than that so if I, if I do the same saturation then it's going to look you know flat they're going to look like they're on the same plane and once again it's just trying to teach your eye to not care what you're looking at down there on your palette because <clears throat> the color doesn't look right sometimes down there all about what's happening up here and I'm not telling you anything too relevatory I mean this is all stuff that I've just learned from reading and watching other artists and I'm not uh, inventing anything here <laughs> I am, as they say, standing on the shoulders of giants who come before me and figured all this stuff out. And I'm still figuring it out. I don't think I'll ever be done figuring it out. And what helps give that sense of, uh, you know, the depth and the atmosphere here is the overlapping. You have like the trees here in this middle row of trees kind of overlaps that background. So you can get the different layers going back. If you can't tell, I don't have a script. I just kind of wing it. Kind of been my life story. here I wasn't doing this kind of thing back then around here I was more everybody knew me for doing the airbrush work all right I'm gonna call that good uh, the clouds are really looking nice off that way. Um, but it's time to go get some breakfast. So thanks for tuning in.